of fine motor challenges like raving. And according to my son, it sometimes smells funny. <laughs> All this contributes to Emerson having overwhelming anxiety. These are days my son is a potential meltdown waiting to happen. Emerson's best days are days with specials. He gets to leave the pressure of his normal classroom and just behind. While his class and even class size remain the same, the simple act of leaving to a new environment can help. Music can be soothing, PE can alleviate pent up energy, and in art, my son can be expressive. Emerson is bonded with his specialist teachers. Often in the career of an elementary school kid, these are the teachers who remain the most constant. Sometimes when Emerson reads aloud, he pretends he's Miss Roscoe, his media teacher. Emerson has chosen a favorite football team based on his relationship with Mr. Mastic, his PE teacher. I'm from Ohio. It vexes me that my son is now a Steelers fan. I can only help the PE I can only hope that PE teacher in the middle school has better taste in sports teams. To educate someone on the spectrum, high functioning or not, an essential member of that team is a teaching assistant. As I mentioned earlier, some of the consequences of autism and sensory processing disorder are meltdowns. Meltdowns aren't pretty. They're not nice. They, there could be screaming, there could be throwing. Most of all, it disrupts a class. It's a sight of autism you rarely see on TV. TAs in the classroom are another pair of eyes that can help and spot when my son is struggling. Sometimes a TA can simply help Emerson to stop and breathe. If my son needs a moment to collect himself in the hallway, the TA is there so the rest of the class can, can, can contribute to learn and not be disturbed. All this is not possible without a TA. My, start, my smart son struggles in school, but if HB 13 doesn't pass, my greatest fear is that my smart son will fail at school. He needs specials and specialist teachers. Those subjects and teachers provide a natural stress relief for him. His, he needs a TA in the classroom to help him and his fellow students stay focused on learning and keep disturbances to a minimum. I implore the North Carolina General Assembly to pass HB 13, not just for Emerson, but for all those kids like him in the state. Thank you. Good afternoon, every, ladies and gentlemen. I am Cancel Lanier Heron, a teacher assistant in the Wayne County Public School System. The state historian for the North Carolina Association of Teacher Assistants and a member of the NCATA Legislative Committee. It feels like deja vu standing here speaking to a group of concerned citizens today. I remember being here in Raleigh two summers ago asking our Senate leaders to find teacher assistance positions. In the end, public support for teacher assistance was instrumental in preventing the original cuts that were proposed by the Senate budget that year. This year, at least so far, what with Governor Cooper's budget plan being the only one released, the possibility of cuts to teacher assistance feels like a direct threat right now and more like a dark cloud looming over the heads, threatening a terrible storm at any minute. Teacher assistants have been in this position before, more times than probably any other group of public school employees. This time feels different. Our public school students deserve the enrichment in their education that our art, music, PE, and world language teachers provide. Imagine our schools without these subjects being taught to our students. It's like imagining springtime in North Carolina without our azaleas, our dogwoods. You just cannot imagine North Carolina spring without all that beauty, can you? Well. I can, can't imagine our students being stripped of the knowledge, the passion of thousands of art, music, and PE teachers, along with our world language teachers across North Carolina.
so why is it a cloud hanging over the heads of teacher assistants? Sounds like this has nothing to do with us, right? Well, wrong. Some school systems in Guilford, Forsyth County are already announcing the possibility of teacher assistance cuts in order to meet the reduction in class size. So, as it happens in the past, teacher assistance positions may be eliminated to find teacher positions in our school systems. But quite frankly, our school systems have been, budgets have been reduced for several years now. Tax cuts have been given to the corporation and those at the top in income and wealth. House Bill 13, it, that requires no additional funding, but simply allows for the lower grade class sizes to be increased by six students instead of three. Without increasing funding to the school system, the problem of cutting enrichment teachers or cutting teacher assistants is solved. It is a win-win situation for our schools, for the teachers, the teacher assistants, and being threatened with the loss of their jobs. It's especially a win for our students. Now is the time to put our children first and give them the schools our students deserve. I am here today to say to the members of the Senate, please pass House Bill 13 now. Our school citizens need to know now that they have the flexibility with our class sizes. Enrichment teachers and teacher assistants need to know now whether having to wait weeks, months, to know if they will have jobs next year. And most of all, our students deserve now to have all teachers and teacher assistants they need in order to have a well-rounded, exemplary education in every one of our public school systems across our beautiful state of North Carolina. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Chris Forgione and I am the band director at Davis Drive Middle School in Cary, where I've taught for the last 19 years. Prior to that, I was, uh, I satisfied an early midlife crisis for two years as a ride police officer after teaching high school band in Wake Forest for five years. And I know you're all looking at me thinking there's no way he's been teaching that long. <laughs> after teaching over 2,000 2, students in my 24 years as an educator, I've watched the pendulum change directions many times and once again, I find myself frustrated with, the, with, with several aspects of its current direction. As a parent of four, four children ages 13 and younger, I am deeply disturbed. The legislation, which is the latest buzz in the news, which is addressing the reduction of class size, which of course I am completely in favor of. I take issue with the suggestion of eliminating art, music, and PE from elementary school programs. Please clue me in as to how this is acceptable. It's an example of cutting off the head to feed the, or cutting off the tail to feed the head. When I left teaching during my midlife crisis, I quickly realized how much I loved what I did. Teaching kids how to succeed through a vehicle which challenges kids in intangible ways academics cannot. Music and art completes a child through cri critical thinking and creativity, interpretation and teamwork, emotional and aesthetic sensitivity. What I teach is reading and math, interpretation and execution of a foreign language with noisemakers, many of them, along with other kids, again with noisemakers. Music is communication for which some kids is their only outlet for expression. Um, again, intangible. Is it important? No, it's crucial. Yeah. Legislator, legislators want to eliminate this. Please clue me in as to why this is acceptable. Like music, visual arts have their own unique developmental intangibles. The holding of a paintbrush or the manipulation of clay, drawing a square or cutting a straight line with the scissors all develop fine motor skills. Just talking about art assists language development. Decision making, problem solving, and critical thinking all occurring during the creative process. Drawing and sculpting, even threading beads, develop visual learning and, sp and spatial skills. Do we assess or measure this? Yeah, sort of. But we also, but we try to do it because we need to. 
we need to validate it. Is it important? No, it's crucial. Legislators want to eliminate this. Please clue me in as to why this is acceptable. Arts, whether visual or performance-based, exercise the right side of the brain, the creative side, what academic subjects cannot do. In other words, the arts complete the child. Someone please explain to me how you can put a price tag on this. Yes, we're cutting off the tail to feed the head. Oh yeah, what else is there? PE is on the chopping block as well. What I haven't told you is I'm a former CrossFit coach and current group fitness instructor with 13 years experience guiding adults to become fitter with barbells and indoor bikes. Adults have a choice as to what we consume and how active we are. Children, on the other hand, are innocent and have a different story. The CDC reports that one in five school-aged children are considered obese, not just overweight, but obese. We're the most developed, richest nation in the world, and we're also the most unhealthy and unfit. Diabetes, heart disease, an entire lifelong plethora of maladies are rapidly rising and resulting in a generation where a child's average life expectancy is less than their parents. That's a travesty. The CDC is currently recommending that vigorous, vigorous aerobic activity should make up most of a child's 60 minutes of physical activity each day, each and every day. In a world where our kids are glued to screens, far too many are missing the boat. The reality is that PE is the only activity that some kids get. The only opportunity to do things that we did as kids, learn to play kickball, swing a tennis racket or a baseball bat, and learn that Pop-Tarts are in fact not a food group and have zero nutritional value. So let's just go ahead and, and reduce the one day of PE my 10-year-old and 7-year-old sons are currently getting down to zero. I'll just eliminate it altogether. Someone explain to me how we can put a price tag on this. Yes, we're going to cut off the tail to feed the head with a supplement of a, of a Pop-Tart. As always, it's all about the mighty dollar, and again, I'm in favor of reducing class size. However, our government, once again, seems to not be thinking things through to provide the necessary funding to, to effectively implement the master plan and not leave a path of destruction of kids and professional educators in the process. Perhaps politically incorrect, I revert back to my days in law enforcement where we learned the proper procedure on the range, which was ready, aim, and fire. Our legislators have it different. Fire, ready, aim. They've got it backwards. Send a clear message not to cut off the tail to feed the head. We cannot put a price tag on art, music, and PE because they're not just important, they are... Thank you. I just wanted to point out to you one thing quickly. We have three senators. You know, the senators are the ones that need to vote on this. Here with us, Senator Mike Woodard right over here. Over there talking in the very back is Senator Rick Horner and his back there. We need y'all need to somebody needs to go to pigeonhole him. And we also have Senator Jay Trogdery. So you might, might might want to talk to one of these three senators and let them know how you feel. I, I promise I won't be long winded. I have props, and I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Broderick, I don't have a jump rope. If any of you know the words, you're more than welcome to sing along. On the road to heritage, it's a family of friends. On the road to heritage, where learning never ends. There are high expectations at this awesome school, but heritage teachers are the best, rewarding me and you. I like fun Fridays and other special days. At the end of every quarter, pep rallies cheer the way. I'm tracking in, you're tracking out, that's the hurricane's way. We'll be making tracks to heritage until our clap out day. That is a CD that was released in 2015. There are 18, I believe 18 songs on that CD of grades K through five that all sang. And that's all because of Miss Bailey, our music teacher. There are some distinct advantages for programs that they're talking about being eliminated. Art and music, language development, musical experience strengthens the capacity to verbally be competent. Brain works harder. Improved sound discrimination and fine motor tasks. Spatial temporal, temporal skills. 
Understanding music can help children visualize elements that should go together. With arts, motor skills, language development, colors, shapes, actions, decision making, problem solving, critical thinking, visual learning, drawing, sculpting help develop visual spatial skills. Kids are learning from graphical images more so now than ever. What kid does not have an iPhone or an Android tablet? No one. Inventiveness. Kids are being able to express themselves via innovation and art. This young man right here 